I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, I've got a lot to share with you right now. Before we go, let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Say with me with faith in your heart. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me and I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So I told you yesterday, I'm going to be sharing with you some set of instructions the Lord um, began to give concerning the month and what he has said. If God is going to take you into dimensions no one has ever imagined, then you've got to do something that maybe you've not even done before. So I'm going to be laying the foundation and then I'll pass on the instructions to you. So we read from Proverbs chapter 8 yesterday and verse 34. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates. Watching daily at my gates. Waiting at the post of my doors. Now listen. As a child of God, you must realize this, that every activity on the earth has the activities of angelic beings surrounding it. Now, God does things by his spirit. But then there are angels that are on the earth that their job is to see to it that God's instructions are carried out. There are also angels that go to heaven and back. So there are angels that are stationed here and then there are angels that do the movement between heaven and earth. Now, what I'm about to share with you will truly set your heart on a path that if you, if you follow these instructions, you're going to see God walk in certain dimensions of your life that you have never, ever Imagine, and I'm serious with this. So realize that there are angelic beings on the earth. And these angels, they are for you. Pro Hebrews 1 tells us, Are they not all ministering spirits sent for to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Meaning angels have been sent for your own good. They are sent to help you. They are sent to minister for you. Now, if you know this, you must then understand how to operate with angelic beings. Now, this is not a call to start worshipping angels. No, you are not meant to worship. And no angel will even take your worship. If you want to worship an angel, they will run away. <laughs> in, in scriptures, you see several instances that men, after receiving such visitation, they wanted to worship. They said, see that you don't do it. Because more like, don't put me in trouble, please. Why? Because in God's scheme of things, we are higher than the angels. Why? Because the angels are made to serve us. Isn't that amazing? The angels are made to serve us. Praise God. Now then, in scriptures, there are certain events that have taken place that I think it's important that we look at them and um, help you see these things. I want to point certain things out in scriptures. Then we'll draw the line and for your own understanding. If you look at scriptures, there are certain events that have happened um, and the timing of those events begin to point to something. And now with the teaching of the Spirit of God, you begin to understand that, oh, I see better. I understand what this thing is saying. So, in scriptures, there are certain things that happened 
And the time they happen make you understand that, you know, we say sometimes praying according to the watches or we talk about the watches. So we talk about the day watch and the night watch. Now, what are those watches? Uh, we have like every every first of the month, we, we normally have our fasting and praying prayer meeting and then we pray according to the watches now some of you have attended those meetings with us so we pray at every uh, watch now what are the watches the we have from 12 midnight right from 12 midnight and then the other watch is three so 12 to 3 a.m 3 a.m to 6 a.m 6 a.m to 9 a.m 9 a.m to 12 noon 12 noon to 3 p.m 3 p.m to 6 p.m 6 p.m to 9 p.m 9 p.m to 12 midnight now when you see patterns in scriptures it points to this fact that these timings are very important so why are these timings important listen these timings are important in not uh, in any region where you find yourself <laughs> you work with time now you didn't create time god created time the bible says in 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 genesis chapter one he created the stars the moon he says he created them for days and times and seasons and and all those things so god actually set up the timing system now why did he set up the timing system for his organization god is so organized now in all these timings there are um activities that god has outlined and who are the ones that carry out these activities angelic beings so in a day now these times is that divided into different segments but in a day you have the watch the watches you have the pattern of the watches which is in every three three hours now actually every three hours um, there are new angels that take over the the activities on on the earth so every three hours there is a change of god permit me to use that word every three hours there is a change of god so this has to do with the angels working with you personally this has to do with the angels working in a particular region or a particular environment so as the time clocks there is a change of God. Now, you see that change of God is called gates. That change is called gates. Why is it called gates? Now, remember, we read in Proverbs 8, it says, Blessed is he who listens to me, watching daily at my gates. Remember, I told you, he said gates, he used the word gates. Why? Why are they called gates? Because the Holy Spirit, who is called the the lord the lord of hosts or the captain of the lord's hosts now that's what he's referred to what does that title mean that title means he is in charge of all the angels that's the meaning of that title lord of hosts he is in charge of all the angels so he is the one that directs the activities of the angels so every angel works under the leadership of the holy spirit now this is the administration pattern of heaven so you have this gate in i'm referring to a day now in 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 a year you have the seasonal watches now now it's simple same thing you have a, as you, you have as um, um quarters you know every three three months so you have this quarter system and then also seasons you think you think everything just functions like that no there are angelic beings that are behind the functionality of everything including the sun the moon all these things you see there are angels particularly whose job are for the regulation of all these things yes praise god i, I pray you learn from this now then so the holy spirit is in charge so at every watch, new instructions is coming in. At every watch, something is coming. You see that now? Something is coming. Now that's the reason if you read the scriptures, I'm going to be reading some scriptures to you. You will see a pattern that certain very important events that have taken place took place about these timings. About these timings. Now, let me show you something. You remember when 
Elijah gathered the prophets of Baal on, the, on Mount Carmel, right? Now, let me show you 1 Kings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 29. Now, you, know, you remember Elijah called the prophets of Baal. And you know the challenge he gave to them. So they began to pray and call on their God. Nothing was happening. Now the Bible says in verse 29, And when midday was passed, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Now, don't think these prophets of Baal were stupid. Before they took up this challenge with Elijah, you, I believe they must have seen some manifestations of Baal before. How come Baal became so great of national proeminence if they had not seen some great measures of uh, manifestation from Baal? So these guys actually believed that Baal was powerful and they believed that Baal was going to send down fire from heaven to consume that sacrifice. They believed it. They were not fools. But guess what? Now, they began to pray from 12. And they prayed until the time of the evening sacrifice. Now, the time of the evening sacrifice is 3 p.m. Now, if you know Bible patterns, you can study these things for yourself. So, the time of the evening sacrifice is 3. So, they prayed from 12 to 3 and there was no answer from Baal. Why? <laughs> the gates were shut against them. Even Baal could not function about that time now watch this in verse 36 and it came to pass at the time now you know when, when they couldn't hear him they couldn't hear Baal, so nothing happened elijah mocked them and then later he said all right all right now let's reset the altar he's reset the altar and prepared the altar then after preparing the altar he waited he says and at the and, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now you, you see that Elijah waited until a certain time. Then he began to call on the name of the Lord. And what happened? Fire came down and consumed that offering. So you wonder, okay, now you say, oh, maybe it's just a coincidence. But listen, Daniel also, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9 and verse 21. Now this was Daniel who was praying. From verse 20. Now, while I was, Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. Now, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayers, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening sacrifice. Notice that again, about the time of the evening sacrifice, Michael showed up. So now this tells you angelic visitation at that gate time. I told you that time. Now this is not the only, the you know, now for example, Elijah, time of the evening sacrifice. That's 3 p.m. For, for, for your knowledge. Now uh, we, we find Daniel also waiting on the Lord in fasting and prayer. At 3 p.m., the angelic visitation showed up. And uh, you know, you know the story and you know how things transpired. Then I'm going to show you something. I'll take you step by step, show you different things that happened. In the book of Matthew, now this one will interest you. Matthew chapter 27. Now this was when Jesus was crucified. Matthew chapter 27. Now you know Jesus was, Jesus hung on the cross. Good. Matthew chapter 27. Jesus was on that cross. And then what happened? 
from verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, now let me read this from a more uh, easy to use translation. So that's, thank you Lord Jesus. Verse 45, I am reading, I'm trying to get a translation that, okay, I'm reading from the HCSB. It says, from noon until three in the afternoon, take note of this time, from noon, that's 12, 12 noon, until three o'clock, three in the afternoon, darkness came over the whole land. See that? From 12 till 3, there was darkness in the whole land. Think about it. Why 12 till 3? Why, why that block of time? Darkness covered the whole land. Now, about 3 in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then, you know, some say, oh, he was calling Elijah and, you know, and then um, verse 50, Jesus shouted again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And then you know what began to happen. So Jesus actually died at 3 p.m. Says he died at 3 p.m. Now take notes. Take notes from 12 to 3 there was darkness. Now, what does that tell you? For Jesus to die, why was there darkness on the earth? For Jesus to die, every angel had to be recalled. Oh, you didn't get this. Every angel had to be recalled or shut down. They, no angel could perform any activity. That was why there was darkness. Think about it. Darkness at 3 o'clock, not in the night. Not early in the hour. 3 from noon, from 12 noon to 3 o'clock. And that's where you have the most <laughs> daylight. You understand what I'm saying? But then it says there was darkness at that time. That's to tell you that it was because of certain angelic activity. So for Jesus to die, God had to pull out every angel. Now, that's the reason Jesus cried out. Say, why have you forsaken me? Because Jesus had a taste of what it meant to be high and apostle. Jesus had a taste of what it was like or, or, or without God in the world. You know what it meant when he cried out, why have you forsaken me? That's exactly what happened. No help in sight. None at all. Now, why did God have to withdraw the angels? I believe if any angel was around, they could have done something to rescue Jesus. Angels go on a war. Angels disobey instructions. If you study scriptures, you would know that they do. So I believe angels would have been provoked that this is my belief. Angels would have been provoked to do something. So God knew he had to call every angel out of the scene. And the moment he did that, there was darkness. And then Jesus gave up the ghost. Now guess what happened after Jesus gave up the ghost? Now Jesus gave up the ghost at 3 p.m. Now what does that mean? That's another gate. So new angels came in at 3 p.m. Now, the moment those angels came in, what happened? Some kind of anger and destruction began to happen on the earth. There was earthquake. The, the, now, let me read it. Verse 15, Jesus shouted again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Suddenly, the curtains in the sanctuary were split in two from top to bottom. Now, that was not a natural occurrence. That was the active... Now, now I was meditating on this. I was like, why is that the first thing that was recorded? I was asking the Lord, actually, like, why? I mean, this thing was taking place at Golgotha, right? So how come the first thing that they are saying 
after Jesus gave up the ghost is that the veil in the temple tore. Now, I know as prophetic teachers, we teach, oh, so the way to this thing is open. But also understand something. That was the temple, right? That was the sanctuary, the tabernacle. Now, that place was a rallying point for salvation. That place was uh, a physical monument that God was with the people. I told you, between 12 and 3, God withdrew all the angels. Now, by 3 o'clock, angels showed up. And when angels showed up, the Son of God is dead. So what? The angel responsible for that veil, now the keeping of, of that veil keeps that sanctuary. I mean, it was just normal to say, even this monument couldn't bring salvation to the Son of God. So what are you here for? Tear it down. So the angel tore it down. And then suddenly the curtains of the sanctuary were split in from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rock split. The tombs were also open and many bodies of the things began to happen on the earth. So from that three o'clock, it was chaos everywhere. Why? The son of God is dead. We'll have to stop here for today. <laughs> it's going to might go on. But we're going to continue exactly where we stop today, tomorrow. May God bless you and give you understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.